Bryce Harper was struck in the face with a 97 mile per hour fastball, raising some concern for some serious facial trauma. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. This is a good opportunity to talk about the anatomy of the facial bones and different aspects of facial trauma, so we'll break that down in this video. As always, if you enjoy learning about this unique side of sports, please consider subscribing and hit that thumbs up button if you learned something, and let's get started. So if you look at his eye black here, it's basically right below his eye. If you feel on yourself, kind of right below your eye, you'll feel kind of a bump in the front part of your face. If you follow that bump all the way around by your ear and kind of rub your fingers up and down, you should feel another kind of hard, rigid line. That bump you're feeling is something called the zygomatic process, and that bump that kind of goes along the back by the ear is the zygomatic arch. So now as this pitch comes in, again, we've got Harper's eye black there just below the eye, and so you can see how that ball makes contact basically just below his eye black before glancing off the side of his face. Now, I'll say that the fact that this ball did seem to kind of glance off the side of his face as opposed to directly strike him and then fall down or fall forward is at least going to reduce the energy somewhat to make this less severe of an injury. But you can tell just from how much his face kind of deforms here with the skin moving and everything just kind of shifting. Part of that is just the skin that's being shifted because of the energy transfer into the skin. And of course, your skin is very mobile across your face. But also some of that is going to be from the face taking the blunt of that trauma. Now, it's hard to say how much of his nose takes the impact here. Certainly the nose is going to move and we can see it move. And part of that could just be because of how it's connected to the rest of the skin on the face. But it looked like the nose at least took a little bit of a glance because of some of the bleeding that we can see here on the inside of Harper's nose. If we look at our biodigital anatomy tool here, I want to point out the different bones that make up the structure of the face. The jaw is pretty easy. That's the mandible. It's what we can move up and down whenever we chew food and talk. But then everything else in the face and skull is rigid. So the maxilla is the bone that sort of forms our upper jaw here shown in yellow. And then the key part that we're going to talk about is the zygomatic bone. I have it here in this blue color. And as you can see, that makes up part of that bump of that zygomatic process. That's going to be where the zygomatic bone joins up with the maxilla and is that part that protrudes out from your face. As we then kind of swing around to the side, that arch that you feel going back, the zygomatic arch, is coming primarily from the temporal bone, which sits more behind your ear. This deeper bone right here is going to be the sphenoid bone. If we look up top, this is the frontal bone. And then when we get back into the orbital socket, we've got a number of other smaller bones here, the ethmoid on the inside, and then some more up into the nasal bones. So it's not like your face is just one bone. While it functions like one bone, it's actually comprised of multiple different ones. So when that pitch comes in, it's basically striking Harper kind of right in this area that protrudes away from his face. And so I'd be worried about possible fracture to this area. Now, part of why our body is built to have this bump there is actually to protect the base of the skull. There are some structures that kind of pass through this region, and so it's not purely for protection, but having this kind of protrusion out from the side of our face helps to do exactly what this happened here with Harper, to deflect objects away from our skull, which would cause much more severe injury if they were fractured. Think of like the halo device in Formula One that's trying to deflect objects away from the crucial person driving the car. Now, when we look at all facial fractures, actually fractures of the nasal bone are going to be most common, followed by fractures over in the zygomatic area. And so while it didn't look like directly there was trauma onto the nose of Harper, we always have to think about fractures of the nose. The rest of our nose, in terms of the part that we can feel and move around, is made up of just cartilage. And so it's pretty flexible, pretty resilient to taking trauma, unless we have damage to the septum or the bones deeper inside or these nasal bones. Now, it's not just the bones we have to worry about with facial trauma. As we look on this side, one of the most important nerves of our face, the facial nerve, runs kind of right up past that area. This is going to control the muscles of the face, and as you can see, it kind of has multiple branches that run right around this area. So even if you didn't have a fracture of the bone, just direct trauma or damage to these nerves could result in another different type of injury. The last thing I'll mention that we worry about with facial trauma is possible effect on the eye. So you can see how a lot of these bones basically come together to form the orbit. Specifically, that zygomatic bone kind of goes back to form kind of the lateral or outer and inferior or lower portion of the orbital wall and orbital floor. Our eyeball is sitting in here with a number of muscles that control its movement and a number of important nerves. And so trauma and fractures to these facial bones can kind of go into the orbital socket and cause damage to the muscles that control the eye movements. So now if we look back at this one more time, imagine that zygomatic process kind of protruding right there below his eye black. Imagine that zygomatic arch kind of coming back here towards his ear. And so as this ball comes in, 
that area is gonna really be what takes the brunt of this impact. And you can see just based on how much the face moves, how much energy gets delivered to that area, resulting in possibility of something like a fracture or injury to those other soft tissues. Certainly, we also have to think about a possible concussion when we have facial trauma like this. So the medical team is gonna have to do some evaluation to really make sure that everything's okay with Harper. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.